Hi, Nikki here with Beauty Jadora with my new Nomi spring pattern, which is ME2034. And I love this pattern. And I know I say that all the time, but I swear to you, I really love it. And let me tell you why. We all want to like stretch our wardrobe, right? And what's the best way to do it? is with fabric changes, changes to patterns, modifications to patterns. And I think this pattern, although it is a spring pattern, it will be perfect for summer. Switch up the fabric and there you have it. I'm actually doing the tutorial with a denim, which of course denim is all the rage right now. And I absolutely love this denim. And I knew at the start of this that it would be really good um, in a denim so I hope you guys like it as well so this pattern it tells you here you can use a gabardine a jacquard wool blends uh, linen I mean pretty much everything that you can use with this pattern so just a few notes about it as well this pattern the last the bottom two pockets are actually faux pockets and the one at the top here it's a real working pocket but what i did um, for this tutorial i made all three of them double welt working pockets and i did walk you through the process hopefully it's easy enough to understand um, as well as the breast welt pocket i have a separate tutorial for that alone and i find that to be like really helpful i take you from the beginning to end it's a quick process once you do it um, so hopefully that works out for you also, one thing to note with this pattern is I cut, when I did the tutorial, I cut it on the fold. I cut the back on the fold. The pattern doesn't call for a back seam. I added one. So if you decide to do that, I'm using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You just have to make sure you add that seam allowance into the pattern um, when, before you cut it out. That way the neck lines up properly and so on and so forth. So another thing, this pattern on the front, it tells you that the top pocket is for the left. It's actually not, it's for the right. But again, it is a pattern. You can put the pockets wherever you want. You can make it completely your own. So we're gonna go ahead and cut out all the pieces. You're gonna need piece one through 13. So you're gonna need all the pieces and it's gonna give you all the layout instructions put all the interfacing and we can go ahead and get started. I would love to see your makes. Please tag me when you do make them. If you have any questions, any comments, if you love the pattern, hate the pattern, let me know. Happy sewing. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so like I mentioned before, there are some inconsistencies with the pattern. So, one in particular which is it's it's kind of a big one um it states that the flap is on the left side but that's actually not the case so right here where it says this is a flap line and it's on the left side only if you take a look at the actual draw, line drawing it's not on the left side it's going to be on the right side so you have these two bottom pockets and then you have the upper pocket, which is gonna be on the right side. And then you have this pocket here where it states left side only. So this is correct, this is not correct. So this is gonna be on the right side. Now again, um, you know, it's a pattern. So you can put it on the right side, put it on the left side. You can put the pockets wherever you like. But if you're going strictly off of the pattern, this part right here is incorrect. So I definitely want to make a note of that. Another thing is when you're doing your, uh, your markings for your buttonholes, the buttonholes are only going on the right side of the uh, front part of the pattern. Only the right side. The left side, you're not going to put it on because you don't want to confuse yourself when it's time to go ahead and add the buttonholes. So you want to make note of that. Another thing, um, which is really important, and, and I kind of touched on this before, in terms of the pockets. So, these pockets here, which is number five, it says here, the lower flap. So, when they're seeing the lower flap, the lower flap, 
it's in reference to the lower pockets. So these are going to correspond, get down. These are going to correspond with the lower pockets on both sides. Now, when you look at the instructions, these are faux pockets. So they're not actual pockets that are usable. So in terms of this pattern, we're going to kind of throw the instructions away. The same way when it comes to the upper pocket. So what I've done, you have the pattern piece. Pattern piece number six, which is the, it's going to say, uh, it's going to say lower welt. What I've done here, this is the upper flap. So this is the one that's gonna go up at the top. I took that upper piece and instead of cutting two, I cut one and then cut it down the middle. So it is two inches wide. The original pattern piece, which is pattern piece number six, and it states lower welt. I only cut one and then I cut it in half. So for this upper flap, we're gonna use just this one piece cut in half. So once you do that, you can go ahead and set it aside. Now for the lower flaps, I use that same pattern piece, pattern piece number six, but I just added a half an inch in length onto pattern piece number six. And then I cut two of those and then each one, I cut them in half. So let me tell you that again. With the lower flaps, I cut two pieces of pattern piece number six, but I added a half an inch in length onto it. So it's the same as this one, but this one's just a half an inch longer. And I cut two of those and I cut each one in half. So each one of this, these are one inches one inches each. So let's just go ahead and set this to the side. Now, if you don't want to deal with making the welt pockets, you know, you're definitely more than welcome to just go ahead and follow the instructions. Um, and the only difference is when the pocket goes on, uh, it's pretty much just going to be folded under like this. So is it the easiest way? Absolutely it is. But the, pa the, um, the pockets aren't functional and they just don't look as polished. It looks good, but just doesn't look as polished. So you have the option. I'm going to take you through doing it the welt way. So I think those are all the little notes that I have possibly. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're just going to start with the front piece, which is piece number one. And we're going to grab both sides of piece number one. So also, it's really important that you have your markings. Of course, I did my markings on both sides um, because I really, I wasn't sure if I wanted to change where I had the pocket, but um, I'm going to keep it on the left side. So you have to make sure all the, your markings are done. Like it's so important, especially with this pattern that you have all your markings. And what I did, because I'm using a denim, a much thicker fabric, I just took a Sharpie just to kind of reinforce this because I know it wouldn't bleed through. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start with these long darts in the front. We're going to pin these. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch the long darts in the front. Okay, so we have the long dart stitched. And uh, now what we wanna do is go ahead and press. And when you press, you wanna press toward the center. 
So the dart is gonna lay in this direction on both sides. So it's gonna go in this direction. Okay, so we have the long darts pressed. Now what we wanna do is reinforce the corner. So you wanna take, stitch through this marking here, just right here. You wanna do that on both sides. So you wanna stitch it, just do several stitches on each one. Okay, so we have the corners reinforced. Now what you wanna do is you wanna clip into this corner right to the thread. You wanna do the same thing on the other side. You wanna clip this corner right here. Okay, so now we wanna work on the breast welt pocket. And again, it's your choice where you wanna have it and where you want it placed, um, but I'm gonna keep mine on the top left. So I am grabbing the left piece. And what we wanna do before we get started is we wanna take a piece of facing. You wanna cut out just like a small piece of facing. And we want to, oh, that's not gonna be big enough. And we wanna put a piece of facing right over this section here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this. Okay, so we have the, uh, the interfacing on. Now what we wanna do is transfer these lines that we have here. So when it comes to welt pockets, there are certain things that's extremely important. And the number one is making sure you're stitching, you stop at the, and begin at the same points across. So it has to be even. And that's when you have a really nice and clean welt pocket. If you don't do that, the welt pocket will be very wonky and it just, it won't look good. So make sure when you're stitching, you're stopping and starting at the exact same places across. It has to be even. So if it was here, you stopped here and over here, you stopped here. When you fold the welt pocket over, it will be uneven. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take the actual welt pocket. We're gonna fold this with right sides together. And then we're gonna stitch this, the sides, using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have the upper welt stitched. Now what we wanna do is, we wanna take and trim this close to the edge and do that on both sides. And then go ahead and turn this right side out and again, I used a pretty thick fabric um, as well as a thick interfacing. So, I also use 
this flathead screwdriver to kind of like poke it through just to make sure it's nice and square. Okay, so once you have it turned out, you wanna go ahead and you wanna press this. Okay, so we have everything pressed. Now what we wanna do is take this part to the machine and you wanna stitch all the way around this rectangle, all the way around, don't stop. And once you get to the corner, what you wanna do is pivot don't take the needle out of the fabric and just go all the way around. Okay, so I have my rectangle stitched. And if you notice, I changed uh, the width of my rectangle. And that is because I made this part just slightly bigger. So if you change any of the dimensions, if you make it larger, you're going to have to increase this. If you make it smaller, you're going to have to decrease it. So that's why that's a change. So what you want to do now is you want to cut down the middle. So you want to just go ahead and fold this over. And just kind of clip it here. It's really thick. slide the scissors in and just kind of like so what you want to do is when you get to the tip right on this part here you want to then clip to the side clip and you want to do the same thing to the other side making sure you don't clip through the actual stitching and you want it to be even. I think this one needs a little more because again, it's really important. If it's not even, then your welt pocket will be very wonky. So you wanna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Just like so okay so what you want to do now is you want to take these little pieces and you want to fold this over on each side including these little pieces here and you want to iron them flat so these are going to essentially be your seam allowances so just make sure you iron them nice and flat Okay, so this is, after you press it, this is what it's going to look like on the front, and this is what it's going to look like on the back. Now what you want to do is go ahead and flip this over, and you want to slide the welt pocket, the welt in there, making sure, so the, this welt is kind of like at an angle. Make sure the top of the angle is going toward your arm. You just wanna kind of slide that in. So if for whatever reason it's too small or too large, this is the time you can adjust it. So if it is too large to fit through here, then you just need to um, increase the seam allowance on the actual well. So you wanna go ahead and flip this over. So now what you wanna do is you wanna take the seam allowance and the edge of the welt. You wanna match this up, you wanna pin this. All the way down. And then you wanna stitch it. And what you wanna do is when you stitch it, you wanna stitch directly on this pre-existing stitch, making sure you catch all the pieces. 
Okay, so we have the welt stitched in. Now what we wanna do is attach the bag. So what you wanna do is take the edge of the bag with this little seam allowance here with right sides together. And I'm just gonna use tape on here just because my fabric is really thick and I don't want to use pins, but I also don't want it to slip. And this just makes it so much easier. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this right on here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this. And what you want to do is you want to stitch directly onto this pre-existing stitch right here, right on top of this. Okay, so we have the top attached. Now you wanna take the bottom with right sides together. We wanna do the same thing. Again, I am using the double-sided tape just because my fabric is really thick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and attach this. All right, and now what we're gonna do is take it, sew this up, using the pre-existing stitch. You wanna stitch right across this line here. Okay, so we have the back connected. Now what we wanna do is turn this out. And we want to stitch the sides. But in the process of stitching, stitching the side, you also want to make sure you catch this little part right here, that little tab that we had cut out. Because what happens is this is going to make sure the side of the pocket is closed up and you don't have any like little holes in there. So go ahead and stitch this all the way up on both sides. Okay, so we have the bag stitched up. Now you want to turn it over. And the last part is to you want to stitch as close to the edge as you can on both sides, slightly reinforcing just kind of the tip here. So stitch as close to the edge. Okay, so we have the pocket completed. Now what you want to do is, and again, if you need uh, more instruction on this, if you take a look, I have a video that shows you step-by-step step on how to do just the welt pocket alone. And it's on my YouTube channel at Beauty Jador. So let's go ahead and move this to the side. And we are going to now work on these darts right here at the top. So what you're gonna do, and this is on piece number one, it's the front. So each side has these, and this is where we already clipped into. So you're just gonna go ahead and pin these. Go ahead and stitch these and then press them toward the middle. Okay, so now what we're going to work on is the lower flap. So remember, we made a few changes. Um, we used piece number six and added on a half an inch for this. And then we cut them down the middle. So now we have four pieces for this. So I'm working on the right side of the fabric right now. So we're gonna go ahead and put 
both pieces together with right sides together. We're going to pin this. And then we're going to use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and go ahead and st stitch all the way around. Okay, so we have this stitch. Now what you want to do is go ahead and trim the seam allowance. And then you want to kind of clip into this curve. My fabric is so thick. <laughs> so I'm going to do this on the side. Then we want to turn this right side out. And use something to make sure you have all this turned out. Okay, and once you do that, go ahead and press this flat. And before you do that, why don't you go ahead and do the same thing to the left side um, using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, trim it, and then clip the ends. And press this one out as well. Okay, so we have the flat pieces nicely pressed out. Now what we want to do is take interfacing and place it over this section here. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. And go ahead and affix this to these front pieces. Okay, so we have the interfacing attached to the back side of the place where we're going to go ahead and put the flap, the welt flap. So, what you want to do, um, you can either use some way to mark it by transfer paper, or I just try to find like the center here. So, I'll just kind of stick this in, a pin in just so that I can locate. I just put a little chalk mark so that I can locate where I need to place my line. Okay, so we're going to then place your line right here. And so essentially this is where the pocket is going to land. And it's going to be, this edge is pretty much going to rest up against this edge. So it's going to be right here. So go ahead and we can draw a line. I want to make sure it's really straight. 
let's do this. And you can use a water soluble marker or you can do a pen. Um, you won't be able to see it once everything is said and done, but if you feel like it's safer, you can do that. So we're gonna butt this against here. So this is gonna tell us, which is just verifying how wide this needs to be. Okay, so then we're just kind of gonna put a line right here and then put a line right here. So this is pretty much the exact same width as the actual pocket. I maybe need to go out just a little further. So what we're gonna do is place this on this line right here. And you wanna pin it at your markings. Here's the front pin. So this is essentially telling you where you need to stop and start stitching. And it may be a little challenge because you have to get over this hump, but again, it depends on how thick your fabric is. And of course, mine is pretty thick. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick one in the middle. Okay, so you wanna stitch using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Stitch right across here. Stopping and starting at the same place. Okay, we have one welt stitched on. Now we wanna go ahead and do the other. And we wanna butt this up at the same place and making sure we stop and start the stitch at the same exact place. And that part is gonna be very important because it's going to determine how neat the welt will look. So we'll go ahead and pin these. Okay, so again, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, making sure you begin and end at the exact same place. Okay, so we have the two pieces connected. Um, now what we're gonna do is cut into the fabric. Now this is the part where you wanna make sure everything is right before you go ahead and cut in because once you cut it, that's it, that's it. You can't go back from that point. So let's go ahead and turn this over. And so what we'll do is we'll work from this side um, just because you can see it better from here. So you want to just make sure that you're gonna be cutting into the center. So you wanna stick a pin right through the center here. Turn this over and it lines up with if you can see it through here, because you already marked it, it's gonna line up 
right here. So we're gonna know where to cut. So what you can do is go ahead and just reinforce this, this line. But what you wanna do is before you get to the end, about a half an inch or so out, you want to, we can measure this. When you're about a half inch from the end, you wanna go ahead and mark it because this is where you want to kind of create this angle here. And you wanna do the same thing on the other side. Half an inch out, you wanna mark it. And let me verify that. Let's go up a little. All right, so from right here, then you wanna create this angle. So this is gonna be the little piece that we keep out. And we'll do the same thing over here. So as you're clipping into this, you wanna make sure you don't go through these stitches and you're going to the exact same spot on each side. So what you'll do, you just kind of fold this over and just make a little clip into this. Then open this up. and you'd want to make sure you're not cutting the fabric underneath so once you get here and clip right to the end and you want to do the same thing on this other side, but not cutting into your welt. I haven't touched the welt on this side. So you're gonna to have to take your finger and feel as you move along. Let's do the same thing on the other side. here I'm going to take this making sure again you don't cut into the actual well do the same thing on the other side so you have these two Okay, so what you wanna do now is you wanna go ahead and you wanna press this. You wanna press this part up and you wanna press this part up. Okay, so once these are pressed up, you wanna go ahead and you wanna turn this So once you do that, you want to go ahead and press it again. And make sure the little triangle pieces on this side are pressed flat open as well. Okay, so we have everything pressed. Now what we want to do is turn this back over and we're going to fold these over and make the actual welts. 
So essentially what you're trying to do is fold them both evenly so that they actually make the welds. So you're gonna to have to play around with it, but as you're doing it, you also want to pin it in place. side and we're going to take a look at it um, after we do this and do the other side just to make sure they're even there's no spaces in between the welt And we're also going to press it because that helps it uh, lay down a bit more so that you can really see how they're going to look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this because it'll give me a better idea of if I need to adjust the welts. Okay, so we have the, um, <clears throat> we have the welts. And so they're not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and base stitch. If you're okay with how yours look at this point, you don't need to do this part, but I'm a little like obsessive about it. So I'm going to base stitch these in place and it'll give me like more freedom to adjust them. Okay, now I'm going to mess around with this and I'm going to go back and iron this again. Okay, so I got this to where I'm satisfied with it. Now what you want to do is you want to lift this up and you have this little tab right here. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and stitch without going into the actual fabric, but you wanna stitch along this line right here, making sure you reinforce this tab here. And you wanna do the same thing to the other side. Pull this up, bring this tab out as far as you can without distorting what you've done here. And stitch over here, making sure you reinforce this stitch here. Okay, now we're going to do the welt bag. So we're gonna turn this back over. We have everything nicely pressed out. So we're going to attach this to this little seam allowance here. So this is the top, this is the bottom. You're going to Kind of lift this up. And you're gonna go ahead and pin this. Okay, so what you wanna do now is you want to stitch across here, making sure you don't go past this stitching line here. So just stay up here, making sure you grab the lining as well as the other two layers of fabric here. Okay, so you just finished stitching this. Now you're going to just fold this down and then you're gonna go ahead and press it. Once you press it, 
we're gonna go ahead, if you did the basting stitches, we're gonna go ahead and open up the basting stitches, but let's go ahead and press first. Okay, so we have it pressed, and now what we wanna do is go ahead and take these basting stitches out. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take this flat and we make sure we're working on the right side. So we want to place the flap in here. It's a little big. So what we're going to do, because I want it to fit completely flat. Um, I could press it out, which that would probably work, or I could reduce the seam allowance. Uh, you know what? I could probably, I think this will work. When I press it out, it'll, this wavy part, I don't know if you could see this, but it's a little wavy, it's not perfect. Um, but I think when I press this out, it'll go away. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna determine how much of this you want out. And if you want, what side you want it on. I think I want it on this side. It's like how much pocket and then you want to make sure that however much pocket you want hanging out that uh, you measure that because you want the same amount of pocket for all the pockets for the other two as well so let's see here because you also want to make sure you have enough to grab the seam allowance, which we do. Okay, so I actually will not have to measure it because I'm going to just go directly to the edge of the seam allowance here. And what we're going to do is go ahead and stitch this. You want to make sure all these pieces are gathered in. And stitch. So what you want to do is, again, use this pre-existing stitch line and stitch directly on this line, making sure you grab all the pieces in here. Okay, so we have this set in, this here stitched. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and press it out really well. Okay, so we have it nicely pressed out. Now what you wanna do is turn it around, take this bag, align it up with the raw edge. it if you can if your fabric isn't too thick because at this point there's tons of layers and it's just it becomes a little challenging so now what you want to do is again take it over to your machine stitch in this pre-existing stitch line again making sure you reinforce the ends okay so we attach the bottom portion of the bag to the top. Now what we wanna do is stitch the sides. 
So you wanna go from here all the way down and you wanna do that on both sides. Here, across here. Okay, so we have the bag sold up nicely. So we have two more of these to go. So you have the one that's up here and then you have the one that's on the other side of the front. Now, if you don't want to go through this process and these steps, you can definitely just follow the instructions um, in the pattern where it's simply, you'll be pretty much folding this over like so. And I believe you're, sti no, you're stitching underneath, so this will just be folded over and then you'll probably end up tacking this in place. Um, either way, it's your option. Um, I think it looks better with kind of like the welt pocket and actual like real working pockets. Um, but again, it's your choice if you don't want to take the steps to do it or if you want to do it for the first time and maybe in the future, you know, try it out. But so what we're going to do at this point is go ahead and do the other pockets. So we're going to do them the exact same way. So the only difference with this one is that you're placing this above this pocket. So it'll be pretty much right here. Okay, so we have all the pockets done. So we'll set this to the side and we're going to take the back piece the two back pieces. Now, if you cut it on the fold, it's gonna be the one back piece. But if not, you'll have the two back pieces. We're gonna go ahead, and if you did cut it on the fold, um, pin this, and we're gonna stitch down the back using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And of course, if you did not Cut the back, then we'll just go ahead and pin the long darts. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stitch. And if you are stitching down the, the uh, back, then go ahead, after you stitch, press the seam allowance open. And for the long darts, after you stitch, you wanna go ahead and press in toward the center. Okay, so we have the back attached and we have the, um, the darts pressed as well. So now what we wanna do is take the front and connect it to the back. And we wanna do that at the shoulders as well as the side seams. So now go ahead and stitch the shoulders as well as the side seams. And after you do that, go ahead and press the seam open. 
Okay, so now what we want to do is take piece number 10. These two pieces are pieces number 10, which is the under collar. We want to line this up. Stitch the back seam and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the under collar seam pressed open. Now what we want to do is take the part we've already constructed. So you have these uh, markings right here. And what you want to do is you want to line this up. So this marking right here is going to correspond with this marking right here. Do the same thing on the other side. Line up this notch with this notch. Okay, so what you want to do now is go ahead and stitch and then press the seam open. Okay, so we have the under collar nicely pressed. Now we're going to go ahead to set this to the side and grab the sleeves. Okay, so we're going to ease stitch in between these notches. What I typically do is ease stitch from here and then start another one from over here. So we want to do that on both sleeves. Okay, so I have the E stitching done right around here. Now what you're gonna do is put right sides together. And you're going to stitch. And you're gonna stitch from here to here. And then you wanna reinforce right here. Make sure you don't go past this point right here. Okay, so we have the side seam stitch on the sleeve. Now what you wanna do is fold this up one and a half inches. You wanna do that all the way around on both sides. Okay, so once you have these pinned, what you wanna do is go ahead and press this out and then press the seams open. Okay, so we have the sleeves pressed out and turned under. Now what you wanna do is take your base here. You wanna turn your sleeves right side out Put the sleeve into the armhole. And you want to line up the seam, 
the side seam with the side seam here. And then you want to match up the notches. And then you want to find the very center top which would be right here and line this up with the top shoulder seam and just stick a pin in there now what you want to do is fit the sleeve in and adjust it as you go by pulling these ease stitching strands here just so that it fits Okay, so we have this sleeve set in. Now what you wanna do is do the exact same thing to the other sleeve, and then you're gonna go ahead and stitch. You're gonna stitch using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And if you did your eave stitching stitches, uh, beyond that just you can just pull them out after you go ahead and stitch it oh, I need to make a little adjustment here so yep yeah, after you do that um, and then what we're going to do is go ahead and press it but let's just set the other sleeve in and because there's a different way that you do need to press this Okay, so we have the sleeves sewn in. Now what you wanna do is you wanna iron it, but what you wanna do is put the iron, put this part over kind of like that thin part, the armhole part on your iron, on your ironing board, and then press it out really hard, going all the way around. You wanna do that on both sides. So ultimately you don't want any like puckers or anything like that. And you want the, the, the sleeve to sit, you know, kind of flush in there. You won't see any lumps, any bumps. So you wanna do that on both sides. Okay, so we have the sleeves inset and pressed. Now what you wanna do is insert the, uh, the uh, shoulder pads. I didn't have any shoulder pads, so I made these out of um, just some batting. And um, on the outside, this is neoprene. So what we're gonna do is this side, we're gonna just pin. So you're gonna find the very center of the shoulder pad. And you're gonna pin it. And you're going to pin it here at the top so this would be a good time for you to check after you pin it to check the fit and see put it on put it on on do both and then put them on and then just kind of see how they feel and see how you like how it looks so what you're going to do now 
is you're going to attach the shoulder pad by the seam. And you're gonna use this seam allowance. Um, I used a smaller seam allowance, so I'm gonna use my presser foot to stitch this. Um, but if you used a regular 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, then it'll be a lot easier. But don't stitch here. Just stitch it right here on the seam allowance on either side. Okay, so I have the shoulder pad set in. And I did stitch on both sides only because my seam allowance is so small. So I just wanted to make sure it was like really secure. All right, so let's go ahead and set this to the side and grab the lining. Okay, so we have the back lining and the front lining. So I didn't, I cut the original fabric um, with a seam down the back, but I didn't do the lining like that. So I didn't have to adjust the pattern for extra fabric. So let's go ahead and do the long darts in the front and the back. And after you do that, you wanna do the same thing you did with the uh, actual fabric, and then you want to press them toward the middle. Okay, so we have the back and front lining pressed. Now what we wanna do is grab the front facing. And again, make sure you have your markings on here. And there's also a marking at the bottom that you need to make sure you have that one there as well. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the front where we're gonna reinforce right here. So we can sew right here. You're gonna sew in like triple stitch through here. And over here as well. Just triple stitch through this area here, and then we're gonna clip into this. Okay, so we reinforce this area, and then we're just going to clip in. But remember, don't clip into the actual thread. I wanna do it right, I need better scissors. We wanna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and grab the front lining. And you're gonna pin the front lining. We're all the way here, the wrong side. Matching up the notches. And once you pin both, you wanna go ahead and stitch. You wanna stitch um, close to the edge at a minimum, probably 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance or smaller. I typically just put my presser foot just up against the edge here. But once you do that, then go ahead and uh, on both sides and then press the seam. Okay, so we have the front lining and facing connected. Now what we're gonna do is connect the front to the back at the shoulders. So with right sides together, we're just gonna go ahead and pin.
Okay, so we're gonna do that on both sides. And after you do that, you're gonna go ahead and stitch using the same seam allowance that you used to sew the original um, fabric. And then go ahead and press. Okay, so we have the lining and the facing connected and pressed. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and grab the upper collar, making sure the markings are all here. So I know a lot of people have issues with collars, um, but I can tell you this, if as long as you have your markings and they're done properly, you shouldn't have an issue with the collar. So let's go ahead and match where are we here right side to right side matching the notch let's go ahead and pin this and then this marking here you want to stick a pin there because you're going to end up sewing from here all the way around not from this marking but from this one this part can get tricky um, so you want to make sure especially if you're using a heavier fabric and a heavier interfacing as I'm doing but just make sure when you stitch this that you grab down here that way there's no holes in your um, collar. Okay, so we're nicely pinned. So if you enter, encounter an issue where you have too much fabric or too much of the lining, you can always put a, uh, a vent here or some type of pleat. Um, it actually looks really good. But um, so this one's set in nicely. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna stitch all the way around. And once you do that, you're gonna press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the upper collar installed. Now what we wanna do is take the sleeve lining. We can set this to the side. And we're going to stitch the sleeve lining, making sure you have the markings. This is really important. So when you stitch this, you're going to stop right here. Stop at the marking. You wanna do that on both sides. And then after you stitch this, go ahead and press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the sleeve stitched. Now what we're going to do is just set these in, matching the bottom seam to the bottom seam. So what I didn't mention is that with the sleeve, or with the sleeve lining, you can do the same thing uh, by doing the e-stitching and then kind of like easing it in, or you could take the easy route, which I'm going to do. I don't do this on the actual um, outside fabric just because it doesn't look as good, but in here, it's not a problem. So I just kind of like pleat at the top All right, so once you have this pinned in, you can go ahead, stitch.
stitch in place um, and do the other one the exact same way. Okay, so we have the sleeve set into the lining. Now we're going to at attach the lining and the facing to the body. I'm gonna turn this with right sides together. I'm gonna start right here in this corner. And you're going to pin all the way around, matching the notches. You're gonna stitch all of this. And you're going to stitch this kind of close to the edge, just making sure you grab both layers of fabric. So once you do that, um, go ahead and press. Also, before you start stitching, I do wanna provide clarification on stitching the collar. So again, these markings are very, very important. So when you stitch the collar, you're going, to, uh, you're going to stitch the front facing, you're going to go around here and you're going to pivot and you're going to stitch, this is the front, the front facing, and this is the collar, the upper and under collar. You're going to stitch to this line here or to this marking here. And then, you're going to stitch from here, this marking, to here. So along this, that way on the front, kind of like the front lapel, it'll be nice and sharp. Just make sure you're stitching here to here, and they should be marked on both sides, and then here to here. So basically here and then here. And you wanna do that on the, both sides. Okay, so after you have it stitched, what you need to do before you turn it is you need to clip the corners. Just making sure you don't clip into the actual threads. Then turn this right side out and press. Okay, so we have everything pressed out. Now what you wanna do is take it and open it up and grab the upper and the lower collar from the inside. All right, so we wanna go ahead and pin these, the upper and the lower collar. And you just wanna pin them right on the seam allowance. And you wanna pin it as far over as you can go. other side
Okay, so once you pin this, what you want to do is go ahead and stitch this stitching just on the seam allowance. So you may have to use your presser foot, but you're going to stitch from here over to here. Okay, so we have the upper collar and the lower collar stitch. Now what we want to do is work on the sleeve. So you want to take the sleeve and pull it out of the jacket. So you're working on this side. All right, and making sure the seams are pointed in the right direction, you're going to match up right sides together. Yep, I'm going to turn it this way. And we're going to pin. Let me grab some pins. So you're just going to pin the ends, the edges together all the way around. Right sides together. Okay, so once it's pinned, go ahead and stitch this. And you want to stitch close to the edge here. Okay, so after you have the bottom stitched, now what you want to do is, well, I'm going to cut these off first. So now you want to take the lining where it's open and the edge here and line this up. And you wanna put a pin because you're gonna stitch on the seam allowance from where it's marked all the way down. And you wanna do this on the other side as well. So you're going to stitch from here all the way down and then from here all the way down. Okay, so once we have the sides and the end here stitch, what you want to do is just clip this corner, clip the other corner, and then turn this right side out. get something to kind of stick in the corner to turn the corners out. And once you have it turned out, you want to just go ahead and iron. Iron it all the way around. You're going to need to iron it really well so that it lays nicely. Okay, so we have the sleeve pressed out. Now what we're going to do is start with the bottom. You're going to fold this under. 
these off. You're gonna fold this under an inch and a half. And then pin it. So you're gonna go all the way around but only do it on the actual fabric and you're gonna leave this loose. And what you're gonna do after you fold all of this under, you're gonna do this side as well as the other side. Then you're going to do a blind hem stitch. If you don't have a blind hem um, zipper or blind hem foot, you'll just go ahead and like hand stitch it. You, only this part you're going to leave the lining loose and once you do that go ahead and press okay so we have the bottom or the hem uh, blind stitched and now what we want to do is go ahead and turn this over so this automatically kind of folds over to a half an inch well at least it should be yep half an inch so now what you want to do is turn the rest of this under a half an inch. All the way around. So if you have a serger, I would also recommend at this point just kind of surging this. And then folding this under a half an inch. Going all the way around. So you're gonna do this all the way around. Now, the instructions call for you to hand stitch this here. And a lot of people like that. Um, I don't, I prefer to have my lining loose. For me, it's just a lot more comfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand stitch from here over, and then I'm going to blind stitch the rest. Because it's, for me, it's just, it's way more comfortable. So I'm going to do that, and then you want to go ahead and press it one more time. Okay, so we have the hem done. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and input the, uh, the buttons, the buttons and the button holes. So um, if you've left your, um, if you've hemmed this part and connected it to your, um, the actual fabric, the lining to the fabric, then what you wanna do is just grab your pattern and uh, reestablish where the buttons and the, uh, button holes go. But if you left it open, as I did, you can go ahead and open this up. So what I'm going to do is just put some interfacing on each one of these and as well as for the buttons on this side. So just kind of like a little square, we'll go ahead and do that. But before we do this, you do want to make sure you know exactly uh, where these buttons are going to be placed. Um, so what I typically do is just kind of put a pin here, and then I put a pin here, and then I just mark this side. I'm gonna mark this with some fabric chalk. So just a quick little right here and right here. So this is gonna tell me where the zipper or the button is gonna begin and where it's gonna end. So we'll just do this a little longer. So you wanna do that on each, for each button hole.
Now, before you put the buttons on and mark the button holes, I would try this on and make sure that's where you want your buttons. Because sometimes, you know, if we're larger at the bottom, larger at the top, sometimes the buttons will adjust because the, where the buttons are positioned now is just pretty much a basic body size. Um, so you can definitely change the locations before you go ahead and cut into the fabric with the buttons. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the facing on all of these pieces. So the facing here, 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 on the other side, as well as the buttons. Okay, so we have the inner facing applied. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the buttons. So, well, actually we're gonna do the button holes first. So making sure you're sewing through both layers of the fabric, we're gonna do the three buttonholes. And I added these little shank buttons that I think are really cute. And they just give it like just a little pop of color. 